Every Nintendo console needs a Mario game, and everything about Super Mario Odyssey says that this could be one of the very best. For one thing, it's gorgeous, and it shows just how good games can look on the Nintendo Switch. But as is customary for the main Super Mario series, it has a new hook, a new gameplay idea that runs all the way through the game, even as it explores other ideas here and there, and just like plays around with the world. That central idea is Cappy, a sentient hat that takes on the form of Mario's traditional cap in order to join him on his journey. Cappy leads to the most singular source of joy in the game, that of being able to take control of many different things in the world. You'll remember that this was notably introduced during the E3 trailer when a T-Rex stomped into view, only to reveal that it was wearing Mario's signature little cap, but it extends to so many other characters, objects, and even enemies in the game. You can hop into a pair of binoculars and boost up into the sky to get a good view of the level ahead. You can embody a spark of lightning and move along electrical wires to cross gaps quickly or zip right up to the top of a building. You can take control of little stone monuments that shuffle around the world and reveal secret areas. Or, my personal favourite, take control of a bullet bill and boost around the level with its delightfully slippery handling. Whatever you want to achieve, you'll soon be throwing your hat at pretty much everything in sight, just to see what it does. You won't necessarily be able to take over everything, in fact a lot of things really aren't interactive, but there are so many things that are. Importantly, you don't need to do this. If you want a purist 3D Mario game, it seems that you can get it. Where I zipped up the side of a building, I quickly discovered that there was actually a platforming path up through the building centre, and wherever there were bullet bills, there were also moving platforms that I could have used instead. There might be some little areas that are locked off behind needing to use the cap, but the main path is definitely catered to. It's a combination of Cappy and a return to the more freeform level design of Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine that give Odyssey this feeling of freedom. Dropping into New Donk City in Metro Kingdom, you can get on with the main quest as given to you by Mayor Pauline, which is a lovely little nod back to the first game that Mario appeared in, which is to find enough musicians to hold a festival. Or you can simply run off and bounce on yellow taxi cabs, scale as many buildings as possible, and bother its citizens by repeatedly bouncing on their heads. You'll have to explore each world and level anyway in order to find the power moons to power the Odyssey ship and unlock more kingdoms to explore and visit before eventually putting pay to Bowser's plans. But there's no prescribed order to these, and many are simply hidden away almost as little collectibles. You might spot one hidden inside a metal girder and have to find a way to get inside. There might be a mini game such as where you capture a citizen who's playing around with a little RC car and take over, or you could be simply bumping into a familiar face such as Captain Toad. Grabbing a moon no longer ends the level and sends you back to the beginning either, letting you just carry on and keep on exploring each new place that you're visiting. That feeling of wide exploration is less apparent to me in the other level I played, which is set in the Sand Kingdom, and this juxtaposes desert-like rolling sand dunes with huge icicles. Passing through the small town of Tostarina and into Tostarina ruins, it feels like a more direct and more traditional Mario platforming game, compared to the very open world feeling of New Donk City. There's plenty of platforming challenges here, such as moving platforms, the little swarms of Goombas that come your way, and even sections where you can pass into a 2D world on the environment's walls. Not too dissimilar from The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds and its signature trick, but while it feels a little bit more linear, peering off into the distance, you will see things that you will be able to get to and discover later on as you explore. Something that you wouldn't really expect from a Nintendo game is that there's something ever so slightly off about some of the controls, making them a little tricky to get a hang of. I think some of it's down to the smaller size of the thumbsticks on the Switch Joy-Con, which makes Mario feel a little bit too twitchy, but there's also a somewhat unhappy balance for me between having motion controls for the hat moves and the button-based equivalents which are necessary for playing in handheld mode or using the Pro Controller. Throwing the hat is simple enough, it's just a button press, or you can flick the Joy-Con, and as an attack this can happily dispatch enemies. It actually goes a long way to dispelling the need to be able to skillfully and reliably jump on enemies' heads in this 3D environment. The game is also easier in that it simply deducts 10 coins if you ever die, and not having to worry about fall damage. 
However, it's pretty tricky to throw the hat and then jump onto it to jump further, as you need to hold the button to keep it in place whilst also pressing jump. But the hat spin attack seems to be very awkward for me without using the motion controls. You flick both Joy-Con in a direction, and that's compared to having to spin the left analog stick and then press the throw button in order to have Cappy arc around Mario and hit whatever's in range. With roughly half an hour to play the game, I still hadn't got a hang of this by the time that we finished, and it's something that I feel Nintendo need to refine with an eye to playing in handheld mode and with a pro controller. But underneath it all, there's the foundations of Mario having all of his usual moves. There's the triple jump, there's the butt stomp, and there's the ability to grab onto ledges, twirl on the spot, and plenty more. As you would expect, the foundations here are solid, but Nintendo are clearly still in the process of refining and honing the new ideas and additions that are on top. Even with these handful of little flaws, Super Mario Odyssey is still shaping up to be another landmark game for Nintendo's so iconic mascot, and I know that I simply can't wait to get my hands back on it and explore a bit further. Thanks as ever for checking out our video, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did do so, then please do like, subscribe, and share this with people. As does come to visit us over on the Sixth Axis for plenty more video gaming news, reviews, previews, and so on. Hopefully you'll join us again soon, and until then, goodbye.